Hi, today I am talking to Stefan Boeger. He is a new faculty member in Sketchbook School. He's in LA. Uh, so we have a nine hour time difference, but that doesn't matter because we're online and we can do this. Um, so he is teaching in our new course, Imagining, um, the course that I'm very excited about. And I'm also really excited that he is uh, joining. And um, maybe you know him from uh, his Ink Monsters, but he does so much more. So let's bring him on. Hi, Stefan. Hi, Kosha. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you for taking the time. How do you feel about um, Imagining coming up in uh, your class? I'm really excited. I'm excited about everything that you're doing at Sketchbook School, and I'm really excited that I get to be part of this now. Yeah, I am too. We had fun filming the class, and uh, I'm, I'm excited to, you know, to get it out there to see what people do with it. Well, so am I, because we're going to see so many different ink monsters appear, because that's um, uh, the demo that you will be doing. You will be showing how you make those ink monsters. Mm -hmm. But um, can you tell me a little bit about other stuff that you do? Because those ink monsters is just a small part mm -hmm. of all your creative endeavors. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing the, and this is dailymonster.com. I mean, I've been doing this for over 10 years now. And I started out as a graphic designer, advertising person. Uh, I design books and I've written a few books, got one coming out in November. Um, and what else do I do? I mean, I've done movie titles. I've designed a theater for the Blue Man Group in Las Vegas. I've done plush animals for Saks. Um, I get around. Uh, I'm creatively promiscuous. Um, I just, I, I always hear, you know, you're supposed to specialize. And I, I'm always like, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Like, I want to be the specialist in something. And then as soon as I go, oh, yeah, you know what? I'm the specialist in typography or I'm the specialist in book design. And I go, right, but I can't say that because I'm also working on space tech stuff. And I'm working on medical things. I'm working on wine, and I'm doing all these different things. So it's always very hard to encapsulate what I do. Um, and to say I do a little bit of everything makes it sound kind of bad and dilettante. But I do a little of everything, and um, I think I specialize in applied craziness. How's that? So your thing might be that you are doing a little bit of everything? Right? Maybe it's, maybe there's one of, yeah, but, you know, but at a high level, I'm a, I'm a high level, a little of everything. You know, I'm sure that um, if I, I mean, I, I've got a shrink, but I, maybe I need a business shrink to just help me sort out what the connecting tissue is, like what is the thread that goes through it. And it, it occupies a lot of my mind to figure out like, right, in my mind, this all fits together cohesively, but I can, I can never really just find the 10 second thing that describes how it all fits together. If it's trying to fix the world, like I'm trying to make, or, and when I say fix the world, I'm trying to make the world conform to how I think it should be. So I guess I'm a design dictator, a design totalitarian. Oh, wow. Uh, and that, see, that doesn't work either because then that sounds very grim. It doesn't sound too nice, no. I don't, yeah, see, this is, this is my struggle. So I will, I will pay cash money to anybody who can come up with, you know, who can explain to me what I actually do. Well, that's, that's really interesting because I think in, in a way it's a struggle that a lot of uh, creative people have, um, whether it's big or small, like finding mm. your style. Is it similar to that? Do you think you have a certain style? Or is it also the style that is like going all over the place? No, I think I, I, I definitely have a style. I think, or like three, four different ones. I think there's a kind of an overarching worldview of how I like things organized. It's hard to see your own style. I mean, you, it gets easier over time because you just have more data points to look at. So, you know, at this point, I've been working commercially since I was 12, so I've got a lot of data points to look back on, and I can definitely see that there's a real cartoon influence with a lot of the stuff, but there's also 
a real Bauhaus influence with a lot of the stuff that kind of gets mashed together. But I don't know, it's more of a style of thinking, I think. Yes, that's what I was going to say, because I think um, your work is quite conceptual on, on many levels, you know, you just think of something, something pops up. And that this is, of course, why you fit so well in the imagining course, something yeah. pops up and then you start making something and um, uh, it's all built around that one idea that you might think is crazy, but it could also be called brilliant or, you know, whatever. Thinking of our students and of, uh, of also my own um, experiences, that also is sort of a struggle sometimes, like yeah. to get that one brilliant idea that you can work from, you know? Do you ever sit and think, nothing's happening i don't have any ideas all the time absolutely and one of the things that helps i think is to get past that idea of i have to have this all mapped out of my head it i need to think it through until i have it fully formed in my head and then i just execute it because i mean that's not that's not how the world works i mean you don't go okay well, I want a tree there. Let me just let me just really think about every leaf and then let me manifest that tree. You put a seed in the ground, and then you water it and you tend to it over a long period of time, and eventually you will have a tree. Might not be the kind of tree that you had in your mind exactly, but it'll probably be pretty similar, but it's it grows and it's also influenced by time, by what's the weather like, what's the ground like. It's not just you. You can be the person to plant the seed and tend it, but you don't. You're not in control of everything. So it's just about starting and then just growing it from there, quite literally, with the with the tree concept. Um, yeah. And I think it's also uh, just like when you can't. You are you're in bed and you can't sleep, and then you you are like, I really want to sleep. I need to sleep. I need to sleep. Right. Then it's not going to happen. Never gonna happen right? So you have to distract your mind. And uh, then you will fall asleep by, I don't know, counting sheep or whatever. Uh, and I, I think, and that's what actually happened to me in my imagining class, because I'm teaching in this course as well. I just started with a few lines and then I just made this whole project out of that. So um, yeah. I agree. And, and it turned out in a whole different tree than I expected. So, <laughs> you know, you have to, I mean, that's what certainly what the daily monster is about. And what a lot of my projects are about is what makes starting possible. And then how do you keep from stopping? Can you tell a little bit more about that? Because that is also something that, can be quite tricky. Yeah, you know, those those are the things. It's it's always about fear. It's for me anyway. It's all about, uh, well, this is not good enough. This is not. Maybe this is this idea isn't worth pursuing. And uh, now that I've started with it, it's not turning out the way I thought it was. Maybe I should just stop and never speak to anybody about this ever again. And I mean, I was blessed in some way that I was super unpopular in school. Like I was a nerd and I was um, also weirdly precocious and different. And so I got used to not kind of being pampered. Like it was like, oh, wow, yeah, good stuff. I mean, I got that from my parents. They were like, yeah, yeah, go do your thing. But I was used to being made fun of and I was used to feeling ridiculous or being made to feel ridiculous or getting the idea that I was supposed to feel ridiculous and stop. And it was like, no, screw that. This is as good of an idea as any. Let me just see where this goes. And so, and I think, and I mean, I hear that from a lot of creative people is this, there's a little bit of defiance in it and there's a little bit of surrender in it as well. I think for a lot of people, it really is this like, I just had this idea. I'm going to see where this takes me. And I think the most interesting stuff comes out of having a ludicrous idea and then pursuing it very rigorously and very almost scientifically. And this was something, when I grew up, I got, I fell in with a group of scientists called the Donaldists, and I talk about this in the class, that dedicated themselves to scientific research based on Donald Duck comics. What I took from the Donaldists 
was the idea that science is defined by the method, not by the subject. So in other words, it doesn't matter what you're applying yourself to as long as you're applying yourself rigorously. So if you start with the weirdest, wackiest premise, and then you just pursue it, A to B to C, and you really connect those dots, you're going to get, you're going to, get to something really, really interesting. And it could be that you have point A and you have point X, and then you just build a bridge between them and you just you can go all over the place and say, okay, well, B is going to be over here and C is going to be here and get this really interesting shape. Or you just say, right, I'm at this ludicrous point A and I want to get it to a point where somebody just understands it where they are and then the audience is point Z is the end point. And how do you connect that? But that to me is, I mean, that's basically all my work. In the, the serious graphic design work and the more whimsical stuff is all about where am I at and how do I get to a point where I can connect with people? How can I make this understood? Yeah, so you're discovering it along the way. You never know on beforehand right. what the end product will be or right. what it will look like because right. you, you have no idea. You just start somewhere. Right. You know where you want to end, but you don't know what yeah. it look, looks like. Exactly. Uh, we talked about not really about habits, but about pursuing and uh, uh, making a habit of uh, making art, doing it daily. I believe that your monsters, that you've been doing that every day for 10 years now? 10 years. And I also don't, I, I don't want to wreck your point. I do, I do it in births. I mean, I do. I am, I, unfortunately, I have but two hands to give to my country. Um, and so I do it in bursts, but I'll do it like three months at a time or four months at a time. And then there's breaks where I do other stuff. I was wondering about it but because yeah. you, it, that's sort of impos impossible to do. Um, but it is a habit. And do you, if you do it in bursts uh, and you haven't done, um, you haven't made a monster in a while, um, do you start missing it? Absolutely. Because it's a, I mean, it's a really good practice because it just does, it, it limbers me up. It makes me loose. And the process is a big part of that. It's just because when you don't, when you just do it every once in a while, then it becomes this special thing. It's like, well, today is the day where I create greatness, right? And that's a, an easy way to screw yourself up because it's just going to get in your head and, you, and then it's like, oh, well, this isn't great. So I fail. And with the monsters, when I do another run, it's always, I commit to doing one a day and I commit to filming it and I commit to posting it. And if it's great, it's great. And if I'm like, eh, it's not so great, then it's like, all right, well, I'll do another one tomorrow. You know, and then and that's actually how the great ones happen is just to be loose about it and say, okay, well, it, it's not that important. I'm just making a little drawing. I mean, that's where I always get into trouble with creativity is when I get, when I let myself slide into that spot of, this is really important. I really got to nail this one. That's the easiest way. It's like, it's like dancing while you're looking at your feet. I mean, it's just not a way to do it well. If you focus too hard on it, it's not going right. to happen. Yeah. I think it's really great to see you, to watch you actually create those monsters. So, um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that students are going to be uh, very excited about it and also starting to make their own. And uh, I hope so. Yeah. So, um, do you have any tips or any anything you want to add to this conversation? Is there anything, maybe some tips about drawing daily or making it a habit? Um, drawing daily, good, which I think the entirety of sketchbook school is already emphasizing. I would say make your bed every morning. This has been a thing of mine for many, many years because when you're when your business is being inside your head and sort of mining for ludicrous things, it's very easy to get lost and it's very easy to get into either sort of a manic like, oh my God, everything is amazing. I'm just going to draw this all out or go like, oh God, I can't think of anything. Therefore, I suck as a person. Making your bed every morning at least gives like you've done that. You know, it gives you a little bit of control and I find it especially helpful when you're working on 18 different deadlines at the same time. 
it's very easy to feel out of control and feel like, oh, I, I'm not on top of this. I can't get this done. You know, like this is still left to do. This is still left to do. There's an open job. This is a thing. But by just saying, okay, you know what? There's still 30 seconds in the morning to make my bed. It just starts you off with the idea of, right, it may be crazy and it may there may be a lot coming on, but I'm still in control of my life. It's, a, it's such a small thing, but it really, it's really, really helpful. That's excellent. And I think also um, the benefit of that is that you will be thankful in the evening that you yeah. did that because you have a nice made bed. It's, it's, it's yeah. good. Yeah. It's, I guess it falls under the now faddish thing of self-care, um, of, you know, you have to take care of yourself. But it's also, I mean, yeah, again, it's it's just, it's a little bit of discipline and it gets you, yeah, you have, you know, you have it in the morning, you're like, all right, well, at least I've done that. And then you get into that habit and you can, you can add other things and then it also it becomes easier to say, okay, well, I'll make my bed and then I, I'll spend five minutes drawing. And five minutes drawing, if you can do it every day, is still pretty good. I mean, a lot of times you'll go, you'll end up drawing an hour because you're just in it. But even if you just do one little doodle every day, you're way ahead of the game, you know, and it's, it'll, it'll just make you feel better, uh, which is no small thing. And that's the other thing, I guess, as a, as a you know, in, in this series of parting thoughts would also be that the doing it is enough. It doesn't have to be useful beyond itself. So if you're making a sketch or if you're making a character or you're doing anything creative, sometimes the use of it is just the doing. And sometimes the use of it reveals itself. Some secondary use reveals itself 15 years down the line. You never know how this fits into, like you never know what leaf of the tree you're working on. So. Well, those are some very good snippets of wisdom. Thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to your class and imagining. And um, I can't wait to do my homework too. <laughs> so thanks and uh, we'll see you in class. See you in class. Bye. Bye.